So now that we've got our drum track sorted, let's start to build a little bit of an arrangement from the ideas that we've collected. At the moment, we can just trigger these devices at random. We're not confined to any sort of musical structure, but I'm going to take these patterns that I've made and I'm going to put them into a little bit of an arrangement. So to do this, I need to see a little bit of the rack and a little bit of the sequencer, so I can do something like that. Now, as well as having a mixer channel created every time you create a new instrument, you see you also get a track for each instrument in the uh, sequencer as well. So if I click on redrum first of all, you see, click on redrum and the device flashes just to let you know that it's been selected. I'm going to export the pattern that I've made, A1, across onto the sequencer. Now these flags here, L and R, these are called left and right locators. These decide which part of the arrangement the pattern is copied across onto. So for example, if I set R at 33 uh, and I set L at 17, then there'll be 16 bars worth of drums exported over between 17 and 33. So I'm just going to set L and R around the first 16 bars, numbers 1 to 17. Obviously, redrum's been selected, so I'll just click there. I'm going to right click anywhere here where it says redrum, and towards the bottom, you get the option to copy pattern to track. So I'm going to select that. And there we go, we get this uh, brand new MIDI clip made. So I can double click and see the contents of that clip. Let me just uh, zoom in a little bit or expand the, the sequencer. You can see you've got the drum sounds down the left hand side. There's your 10 drum sounds. And you've got these red blocks which tell Redrum where you want each drum to sound in the bar. Now these are called MIDI notes. So we can actually record these in freehand using a keyboard or we can in fact draw them in, which is something we're gonna do a little bit later on. But uh, the benefit of using Redrum is this step sequencer device. You can jam out your beats and it maybe is a little bit quicker than drawing them in freehand. Now, one thing that you need to do, now we have moved over from the rack into the sequencer, there's a button here that says enable pattern section and you need to make sure this is turned off. Otherwise, get the playhead, put it back to the start of the track if it isn't already. I'm just going to hit spacebar to start the, uh, start the arrangement playing. What will happen is the redrum will be triggered once by the MIDI clip that we've got present in the arrangement and also once by the step sequencer. So you might get some weird sort of phase effects. Like that. Now if I turn this enable pattern section button off, it's only the MIDI clip present in the arrangement that's triggering the redrum device. Now when you double click on a clip like I have done, you enter what's called edit mode. Here you can edit the contents of the clip. So although I've exported a pattern over onto the arrangement, I can still go in and edit that if I want, which uh, again is something that we're going to do a little bit later on. To exit edit mode, you can press this button here and you get to see the sort of like zoomed out arrangement. So let's do that same process. Let's carry out that same process for both the Dr. Octorex devices. Now these devices actually have a dedicated copy pattern to track button. So to see that you need to just expand the programmer and here you go, copy loop to track. So if I just press that, you can see there is the loop copied over onto the correct track. So I'm just going to fold that programmer away. Let's do the same thing for the second Dr. Octor X. And there we go. They also have an enable loop playback button, which as with the redrum, you need to disable once you start to work from the arrangement or the sequencer rather. I'm just going to press stop to get the playhead back to the beginning. Let's press play. And there we go. Just let me zoom in. Now this is where we can start to make a little bit of an arrangement. At the moment we've got all three drums playing, but say for example, we want to start off with just the redrum on its own. 
or we can highlight these clips and backspace to get rid of them. So let's have redrum on its own for the first four bars. For the next eight bars, let's have redrum on the tambourine. And then from bar nine onwards, we're going to have all three. So let's just stop back to the beginning, hit space bar. So there's the first 16 bars of our arrangement. Now what you can do, let me just find. Let's go for this nice conga sound. Like I just said previously, you can actually augment the patterns that you have present in the arrangement. So let me double click to enter edit mode for the redrum drum patch. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can hold command or control on the PC and just scroll to zoom in. And what I can do is position notes using this pencil tool. So that nice conga sound, that one there, I'm going to place one of those every, let's say, every four bars. Let's have one there. Let's scroll across till we get to the beginning of bar five. Make sure we're in line with the correct slot. There we go. And then one when we get to bar nine. Let's leave it at that for now. So we're going to exit edit mode. Press stop to get back to the beginning if we're not already. Hit space bar. It just adds a nice little bit of punctuation to the beginning of the four bar phrase. We need one more at bar 13. Which is there. Oops, that's the wrong one. So what we can do now is revert back to the pointer. We can get hold of that MIDI note and we can drag it around the grid that you can see. If we want to get rid of a note, just click on it once, press backspace. And finally, if you need to change the resolution of the grid that you're looking at, you can do it here using this drop down menu. So at the moment, each of those vertical lines that you can see is a 16th of a bar. You can change that to be smaller like that. You see we've got half the grid lines or you can make it uh, a smaller fraction. So 32nd of a bar, twice as many grid lines, eighth of a bar. That's a much bigger fraction, half the grid lines of a 16th. Generally speaking, though, I tend to leave the grid size on a 16th because I find that that suits uh, most applications. So there's the basics of uh, arranging. Let's add some instrumentation to this now.